Okay, so I've got my little computer here, and I'm going to show you what this is all about. Now, before I get into that, I want you to know I'm using the hashtag G-A-M-A, gamma. It's not G-A-N-M-A as it should be. It, it, I mean, it, in, in Chinese, it's gamma. It's, it, it's, it should be G-A-N-M-A. What's up? Like, what? Ah! You know, if you annoy your friend and start poking on him to try to get a reaction out of him, he'll go, come on. Okay, so that's like, you know, like, uh, what? And then ma, ma it, you know, you know, Japanese ka means it's a question and Chinese ma means it's a question. So, uh, you know, gan is what, you know, what? Okay, so gama, that's a hashtag. And you could write ganma, hashtag ganma in Chinese, or you could write G-A-M-A. And I'm establishing this hashtag for what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll be the only person in the world who cares about helping Taiwan's problems. Yes, you do di chou, you zi se yi ge ren, zai hu, Taiwan de wen ti. Dan shi, wu hui, hashtag G-A-M-A, hai shi hashtag gamma. So, ni ke yi. Dan ni kan guo, Taiwan de wen ti, zao pian, Hashtag Gamma I said G-A-M-A Okay So I'm uh, Telling people in Taiwan If you see a problem in your government That's what this is about This is about helping people Understand In Taiwan What the problem is to drain the swamp This does not mean This hashtag Gamma Does not mean we hate Taiwan Hashtag Gamma This is not Woman, Taoyan, Taiwan, Busu. Busu, woman, peeping, 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 Busu. So, woman, Yao Gai Bian. This is some of woman, she Yao Gai Bian. Zhong Tong, in Gai Tongi, uh, Lai Ching, the Xin Zhang Yan Zhang, in Gai Tongi, woman, Yao Bang Zhu, woman, Yao, uh, uh, I don't know, the Chinese word for improvement. I guess I'll have to look it up. <laughs> we want to become better. This is the problem. Why do we tolerate this problem? Taiwanese tolerate many problems because they've been oppressed by a government in the past, in the past, not now, it's getting better, but it's time to drain the swamp. So, I had some swampness to give to the U.S. government, hoping that they could politely go to Taiwan and quietly approach them and quietly fix the problem and everybody save face. But they don't want to do that. The State Department doesn't accept videos or USB drives. Neither does Congress. They don't accept videos. I cannot send a YouTube link. I ask. I send a YouTube link. You look at the address, type it in, and you see the video I want you to see. No, sir, we cannot accept videos at Congress. I'm sorry. I said, well, please tell my congressman. He said, okay, I will tell your congressman that you don't like the weekend. I said, thank you. And then we were done. So... Congressman John Mulianar, I love you, um, and Dave Camp before you. I'm going to show you at the State Department and in Congress what maybe we can do. Uh, Congress in, in your halls and at the State Department in, in every, uh, you know, somewhere in a building, there should be an old little useless trash computer with no hard drive. It, it's not connected to the internet. Maybe it's got Wi-Fi and it's disabled. It's, it's it, like, it's a standalone old computer without a hard drive. And you get a USB, go to Ink is a Verb, the YouTube channel, one of my YouTube channels, and look at how to install Ubuntu and you'll see how to download and get with Unet boot in and the Ubuntu ISO onto the USB. Many other people can do that. It's very easy. And then... I take this little Taiwanese computer that I dearly love, and we're going to plug it in. On the, th th this is an old classic Windows 8 computer. This is actually one of the first Windows 8 computers, by the way. I'm very, very happy to have gotten this from ASUS. I'm really pleased with it. It's a Taiwanese company, ASUS, and they make good stuff. But this is a different USB generation here, so I have to put this... Uh, you can't put... You can't boot uh, USB 3 sometimes in the older generations. So... I'm going to put this here where we're, we got the USB in and you're going to see some funky green screen stuff, but I'm going to show you how this works. We're going to turn this on here. 
turning it on and pressing escape because that's what you have to press on this computer. Okay, it's, it looks green because of the green screen, but we're going to try to fix that. There you go. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our little, our little down arrows, and this is called a boot menu, and we're going to move down, and we're going to select this drive here. Now I need to press enter. So we, we got a USB drive selected. I'm going to press enter, and I'm going to boot. And you see the little light flashing? Okay, I can wait. It's going to yep, boot to Ubuntu. See the little USB light flashing over here? Okay, it's booting, it's booting, it's booting, 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 booting. And it's not touching the hard drive on this computer. It's completely booting only to Ubuntu. Open source. Secure. Used by governments. Very secure, used by banks, at least according to Mark Shuttleworth, the guy that founded it. Very, very secure. It's hard to write viruses for it. Windows, it's easy to write viruses for, supposedly. There's, there's a lot of viruses. It must be easy. There we are. There's Ubuntu. Now, everything is happening, the disk, everything, it's all running on, on this little USB over here. Everything's on that. It's not going to mess with a computer. You don't need a hard drive. If I have a hard drive, it won't mess with it. Now, I boot it up to this black USB here. Now I'm going to take this other USB, this one happens to be white, and I'm going to plug it in uh, where I want to. Uh, here, here I'll, I'll plug it in uh, right here. Ready? And wa watch what happens. I'm going to plug it in, and uh, in we go. Oh, is it going in? Oh, it doesn't want to go. Oh, no, there's too many of them there. It won't fit. So I'm going to come over here and plug it in over here. Now you know why I didn't plug it in over there. So there, I got my, my two USBs, see? Got my two USBs plugged into this. So it, it just gave me a little message on top that the USB has been plugged in. Let me see how I can do I Actually, this is a touch screen. So I can, I can use this. I'm going to go over here to, to Files. Should open. Where are you? Oh, it's working. It's working. It's, it's working on a USB, so it's slow. Oh, it's open twice. I can close one of those. Boop. Oh, I did it. look at that. Okay. So there we are. And I'm going to come out here. 16 white. That's the name of my, my white USB here. 16 white. And, and there it is, right down here. And I'm just going to click on it. And, and there's, there's my evil my evil, horrible document that you're worried about infecting your computer with because you don't know how, because you're tech phobic, you guys in government. I understand. Okay. But you know, there's the file you're all worried about. Okay. So there's our file. And uh, there we go. We open up LibreOffice, not Microsoft. You, you, you should have, you know, government documents in, in open format. Taiwan did. We'll talk about that. So there we are. There's my, um, there it is. Look, I'm a harmless little open source document. And you can read what people give you. You've got the text version of it. And you're looking at it on a standalone computer. We booted to this USB. We're reading off of this one. And we can just unplug the whole thing and we're done. It's all open source, doesn't cost any money. Congress, maybe every congressman should have one, maybe not. Um, but, you know, there should be one in the congressional building. There should be a central building that if you receive a document or a USB and you need it looked at, you know, someone will use something. There's no reason the U.S. government can't receive digital media. There's just no reason. And it's got a, it, law, a law would need to be changed. I mean, it's a security issue. I, I get that. We don't want people who don't know how to use a mouse, people who graduated from college before they knew how to use a mouse. We don't want them saying how to work with these USBs. No, but we can get laws working so this can work. There should be a standalone computer with very simple instructions on how to just receive digital media. Police stations should have it. 
And you should not be running Windows. And you should not be receiving Microsoft Windows documents. I'll talk about that. But there it is. So I'm just going to close it. This works with a mouse also. But this, this, this was a touchscreen designed for Windows 8. I had to pre-order this computer. This is the first Windows 8 computer on the market, at least one, among them. So then uh, come over here and uh, the, the thing and I've uh, been power off. And I haven't touched the hard drives on the computer. I don't, in order to access a hard drive on the computer, I'd have to click on it and go to it just like I had to click on the USB because it wasn't there yet. That's how secure it is. And if you have a computer without a hard drive in it, there's no problem. Now, about digital media. You know, I, I should probably talk about digital media in Taiwan in another video. But, but this is how governments could receive uh, digital files. There's no reason they can't do this. So I have to have these constructive criticism videos with hashtag gamma. The whole hashtag gamma thing was started as, you know, because the U.S. government wouldn't take it. So I have to explain what this is. We love the people and we hate the problem and we want to help the people because we love them. So we want to get rid of the problem, which is why we're talking about the problem, because we love and we're happy. That has to be said to a lot of people because they don't know that. And, and that's what hashtag gamma means. And I have to do that because the government didn't know, the U.S. government didn't know, doesn't have a policy for doing what I just showed you. And everything that I used was free except the USB and the computer. All the software you saw was free and, and open source and it can be downloaded. So that's a way, I, I think it'd be great, but I'll tell you this. I came to Asia so that I could understand international issues. And I had a feeling that after Obama, it, it, the trend had been lawyers and governors he was a senator, which is an older trend. I had a feeling that after Obama, sometime the trend was going to move to businessmen. I didn't know it was going to be so quick to Trump right after Obama. Obama sped on, along a lot of things by being there. And so now I got businessmen. But I had a feeling in 2008 and 2009 that after Obama's time, there was going to be businessmen as presidents. And after that, it was going to be people with international experience and since then, I've realized tech experience. There's too much xenophobia and tech phobia in governments. And one day, I might run for government office for one or two terms, and uh, my, my platform would be overcoming xenophobia and overcoming tech phobia, getting proper technology in place. Think about this. If the U.S. government doesn't have a policy for doing what I just showed you how to do if, if some and local police for how to receive a, a digital media. You, you could you could use a computer like that to watch a, a DVD. Also, you could receive other media on it. But if, if governments don't have a way to receive digital media like I just showed you. Why in the world are they even passing laws or even debating internet censorship or internet equality and that stuff? SOPA, PIPA, internet, digital rights, uh, this, 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 this thing with the, the internet service companies wanting to like let Facebook pay more for faster internet, like, and that's not equal. Why does government have anything to say about this at all? If they don't know how to do what I just did, governments should have been doing what I just did since 2005 when Ubuntu was already on the market, but they haven't been. They haven't been. They're, they're, they're dealing with trying to, to say that, that it's right for Facebook to, to pay their big money so they can be faster than normal people and put all the little small companies out of business with their little baby websites. Government should not be arguing that if they haven't even had this policy in place. SOPA, PIPA, the, the, the digital millennium, the millennium digital rights, whatever. I, it, none of those, there shouldn't be any laws about software if governments can't even receive it. 
I'm going to talk in the next video about what Taiwan's doing with file formats because that's very, very, very interesting.